More of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Welcome back. Hanging out on a Monday, starting the week off right. Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Zach Gelb Show, 609-919-9200 is the number if you want to hop on board with us. Home Run Derby is tonight. And then in San Diego tomorrow night, you have the big All-Star game. And now joining us on the hotline is a two-time World Series champion. He won those with the Tigers and the Mets, played with the New York Mets, and was an All-Star member in both 1989 and 1991. And now joining us on the hotline, you know him as host. Ojo, and that is Howard Johnson. Howard, Zach Gelb, thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Hey, Zach, how you doing, man? Good to be with you. Well, great to have you. I'm doing great here on this Monday. Beautiful weather outside, but I want to take you back to 1989, the first time that you found out that you got into the MLB All-Star Game. What do you remember about that day in 1989? Well, I remember I got I got in. Uh, Tommy Lasorda, I think, was the manager, and he... Uh, called and uh, said that I had made the team and I wasn't voted in. Uh, Mike Schmidt was voted in that year by the fans and he retired like just prior, I think, to the game. So I remember when Tommy called and he he, uh, he said that I'm going to be the starter uh, for the game at their base for the National League. So I was really excited about that. Obviously, first All-Star game, he had a chance to start. And uh, be with on the same field with all those players. It was it was truly amazing. It was a cool cool thing to be a part of. You mentioned some of those players that you played with. Your infield was uh, Will Clark, Ryan Sandberg, and Ozzie Smith. Clark, it was his seventh All Star game. Sandberg, his sixth, and Smith, his ninth. And it was your first at third base, and you were starting. Were there at all any nerves from Howard Johnson before that All Star game? Well, I think you always get a little bit of nerves before any game like that, of that kind of magnitude. And you want to put on a good show and do well in front of your family and, and people watching on television. And you want to represent the, the Mets and the National League well. So there's always there's always other things that are, you know, that are on your mind, you know, with, around the game. But it was cool just to be there with those players. I mean, you know, playing against these guys for a long time and just having the utmost respect for them. Uh, I, I, I just... It's just hard to describe the mutual respect guys have for one another that at that game. Now, some guys would just be fortunate to play in one. You were able to play in two. Just give me your favorite memory about playing in the All Star game. Probably, probably just being get my first at bat there in Anaheim and, and getting a base hit and driving in a run, and I ended up stealing a base. Uh, Eric Davis was on in front of me, and we double stealed uh, second and third. So it was. We got a chance to kind of do it all in one inning. It was fun. It was, uh, it was, it was uh, just a, it's a memory that I'm never going to forget. And, of course, the big, big thing about that game was when Bo Jackson led off with a home run to center field off, a, off of a Russell that he just absolutely hammered. And no one's going to forget that. When they watch that on video, they're going to, you know, that's shown every year, I think. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. And let's take a look at some of the teammates that you went with to the All-Star game. In 89, you went with Daryl Strawberry. And then in 91, you yeah. went with Frank Viola. <laughs> it's such an honor to go to the All-Star game, but when you get to share it with your teammates, I bet that had to be a little bit extra special, Howard, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we was in Anaheim. We got there. You know, plenty of time, and um, they had a nice, nice thing set up for us. And you know, so all of us as teammates, you know, we got, we got to go and kind of mingle with all the players, their wives, and their families. Uh, it was, it was special for sure. And you know, the other, the other thing I remember too about that that game was uh, the home run hitting contest. It was a little bit different than they ran it back then. Um, it was more National League versus American League. It wasn't the individual thing the way they did it. And I remember um, Mitchell was on the uh, was on the National League thing with myself, and I think Will Clark or uh, Eric Davis. I can't remember the other couple couple guys, but we we were together. And of course, Mitchell used to be with the Mets, so we're and we're, we're still close friends. So it was uh, it was neat to be around him with that and um, kind of experience that together with him. 
Howard Johnson joins us right now on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Uh, let's get into a little bit about Doc and Daryl because they're going to have that big 30 for 30 coming out this week. And we were just talking a little bit about Daryl Strawberry. When you take a look back at playing with both Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry after all these years, just really what stands out about those two players? Because there was a lot of highs and there was a lot of low points in both their careers. Well, when I, when I see those guys and I, I still see them, regularly uh during the year different events and things um you know i i just love those guys they as, as a teammate i mean i was in awe of their their ability first of all who wouldn't be you know straw was you know built like most guys aren't and long and wiry and had that whip and he could drive the ball out of the ballpark anywhere and you know he could run he could do all those things and you know stock was the same way just commanded you know, presence on the mound. And when he took the mound, other teams, you know, they, they knew he was out there and they, they kind of knew ahead of time it wasn't going to be a good day for them. And that's the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, I remember as a teammate. But, you know, look, I love those guys. They're, they're great. Um, you know, Straw, he, he's gone through some issues, obviously, but he's come through that. And Doc has done the same thing. And, um you know, I wish them nothing but the best, you know, in their life. And, and, and I'm, I'm anxious to see how they, what they do with this 30 for 30. It should be a very interesting piece. As a player that played the game almost every day and, you know, you always went to the ballpark with a certain level of excitement, it was just a different atmosphere from the fans, especially in New York as well, when Doc Gooden would go on the mound and pitch every fifth day. What was that like the day that you knew Doc was going on the mound, especially the way that the fans embraced him in New York? It was like an event. I mean, you know, you talk about NFL being an event every once a week. When, when Dwight pitched at home, it was an event. And, you know, the fans showed up early. Shea was rocking. And he fed off that energy. And I, you know, uh, Doc, Doc's from Tampa. I'm from Clearwater. So we were, we were kind of we were kind of like brothers from the same area. And, you know, I always felt, I always felt uh, you know, a connection with, with Dwight and, um, yeah, when he pitched, you know, it was fun to be on the field when he was when he was out there because, again, it's hard to, it's hard to describe. I mean, even now, I mean, you don't really get the sense. I mean, I, I know the players on teams get the sense with certain pitchers that, you know, if that pitcher's on, it's over. Like a Kershaw, or a Bum, Bumgarner, one of those guys. You know, Cueto, those guys are on. It's going to be a long day, um, and those and the players know what I'm talking about. So. When Dwight was on the mound and he was on, especially if he didn't get him in the first inning, forget it. He had no chance. Do you so feel it was one of those games? Yeah, that he when he was out there, it was it was fun to be a part of. Really. Do you feel like that team though should have won more than one World Series when you take a look back at it? <clears throat> oh yeah, I, I think we should have. You know, '88. Uh, I'm sorry, '87. Everybody got hurt. Uh, you know, the pitching staff went down one by one. And still, we were bad to stay in the race, but we just couldn't, you know, we just couldn't get enough to get out of there. And, you know, 88, we probably should have won that one, too. It was just, you know, a lot of circumstances happened. You know, the Dodgers, you got to give them a lot of credit because we beat the hell out of them all year. And we had a chance to, you know, take care of them in the NLCS and didn't do it. So we, uh, yeah, we, we just, we couldn't, we couldn't get, we couldn't finish it. And um, I, I know for a fact that, that all the players on the team, Look at look at that period of time and wish that they had, you know, had to do over again. Probably would have gone differently. And some of those decisions recently uh, after '86 have been brought up in that uh, Dykstra book that just came out. And uh, Lenny Dykstra had some uh, few choice words to say the least about Davy Johnson. Did you at all read the book? And also, what was your relationship like and your view like of uh, a player that played under one Davy Johnson? Oh, I love Davey. I, first of all, I haven't read the book. I, I saw some of the excerpts out there on Twitter, and, uh, you know, people send me articles and stuff about, you know, the, the book that Lenny wrote. But um, I haven't read the book yet. Um, I'm going to see Lenny in uh, Cooperstown in a couple weeks. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, Davey was unreal. Davey was awesome. Uh, I loved playing for the guy. He, he, what what Davey was good at was he was good at um, finding um, – what each player did well and made sure that he maximized that 
that potential and put them in a position to be successful. And that was what he was very, very good at, and the players knew it. He was also part of the players. I mean, he was he was uh, he joked around with us. He had our backs at every turn. It was just one of those relationships with the manager that you dream of. And that 86 team is always going to be synonymous with winning that World Series, but everyone really does talk about that game six, the ball going through Buckner's legs, and so many guys on your team, some are in the clubhouse, uh, you know, some are on the bench, some are obviously on the field. When you look back at 86 and you're sitting there seeing that thing unfold, what's just going through your mind? Well, I'm I'm in a dugout. I'm I'm going to hit like fifth or sixth that inning, I think, and um. I'm just trying to see what's, you know, first of all, I couldn't believe that we were in this position to begin with. And then, you know, Gary Carter was just going back and forth in the dugout saying he wasn't going to be the last out of the World Series, but he was not going to be the last out. He just kept saying it over and over to everybody. And I think when he went up there and he just battled like he did and, you know, got the base hit to kind of start everything, you know, the guy started to believe that, hey, if we just, if we will it, maybe it'll happen. So guys went up there with, with an attitude that they weren't going to be the last out. And that's, and that's shoot, man, that's, that's, that's 90% of it. If you can go up there with that attitude, you're going to be successful. If you go up there thinking that it's over and all is lost, then you're not going to be successful. Simple as that. And that's the kind of mentality that that team had, and that's why people love that team and, and gravitate toward it so much is because they recognize that quality. And Gary Carter, it's unfortunate that he passed away and had that uh, battle towards the end of his life, but I got a chance to meet him twice, and he was just such a kind man. He had to be one of your best teammates that you ever played with, right? Oh, yeah, Gary was great. Uh, we lived near each other in, in, on, uh, in Long Island there, so we drove in a lot and together, and uh, so we got to spend a lot of time together. And his family was tremendous, and uh, Sandy was a great, great woman, and just sad that the way, the way things had to happen for him, it happened so fast, and uh, you know, the game will be missed for sure, but you know, his memory lives on, you know, I always try to mention that, you know, that thing about Gary, because people, you know, they, they spend so much time on the Buckner thing, and all the, the plays and everything, but it was really Gary's will, you know, in the dugout that I felt was a big, big part of, you know, what happened in the ninth inning, or tenth inning. Wrapping up with Howard Johnson, who joins us right now, I want to talk a little bit about the Mets in the current day. Last year, it was all about Daniel Murphy in the postseason, and then Murphy in the offseason signs with the Nationals. And ever since, he's just been killing the Mets, a 423 average, seven home runs, and 21 RBIs in the concise time so far this season going up against the Mets. And you saw the Mets dominate the Nationals this past year, and now the Nationals are starting to dominate the Mets. This is looking like to be the start of – one really fun and interesting rivalry, one Howard Johnson. Oh yeah, it's great for Mets Met fans for sure because you know they they've waited a long time to be back in, in this position and you know they deservingly so should should uh, be very happy with it. You know I had Murph when he first came up and you know I made comments in the paper you know I say hey most of the guy is going to hit he's going to hit twenty home runs in big leagues one day he's going to drive in eighty ninety runs he's going to do these things he can do it and. uh you know, it was still a little bit, little bit off, but you could see that he had that ability. And it seems like whenever guys leave the Mets, they always come back and haunt, haunt the team. I think if you look at over history, and you start pulling all the guys that, that were ex-Mets and what they did against the Mets when they played, I think the numbers are probably more than more than average. So, yeah, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good for the Mets this year. They're 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 in, they're in the thing. Um, you know, unfortunately, the Nationals are healthy. Uh, so that is a, you know, they have to deal with that. The, Met, the Mets, uh, you know, they're dealing with some things right now, and they've got to get through their own injury issue. But, um, you know, it's going to be a fun summer for Mets fans as well as how it plays out. And you just take a look back at last year, and it's a little bit different now because the Nationals are a better team. And like you said, the Mets are going through injuries. But I have to imagine that experience last year being in a similar spot where you weren't in a bright spot, a hot spot going into the All-Star break. And then at the trade deadline, the Mets come out of nowhere after getting Ioannis Cespedes and really come on back and win the NL East. And you know the rest is history. They went to the World Series. I'd have to imagine that experience last year really doesn't make the Mets panic too much, even though they are are six games back in the NL East right now? No, they're not going to panic. I mean, they're 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 uh, they're going to draw on that experience. I mean, things things happened uh, 
you know, kind of fell into place for them last year. I think Murph got hot at the right time. Uh, David, you know, came back and played really well. The pitching staff was uh, was clicking on all cylinders. You know, this year is not quite the same. I think it's a little bit, little bit different. But and the players know that. And what, the worst thing you could do as a player. Or even as a fan, is really to spend too much time looking at last year because last year is last year. Every year is different. There's no guarantee one one year to the next, and you don't know what injuries teams are going to sustain. You might sustain your own injuries, and you just can't really uh, think. Well, last year this happened, and last year this. Happened. Every year is separate. I mean, the Mets have a good team. Washington has a good team. There are other teams in the league that are playing well that the Mets have to be concerned about as well. So. You know, can the Mets catch? Absolutely, they can. They can. They can catch Washington, but it's going to take a huge effort to do so. You know, in the second half, you know, less than half the season left, they're going to have a long way to go to get six games. But you know, fortunately, with two wild cards, you got a good shot, and with their pitching, you know, they can get back into uh, where they need to be. From, you know, by winning a wild card game, so there's a lot still to look forward to. Jose Reyes got a second chance, and you can make the argument that he could be in jail, but the uh, charges uh, were dropped because his wife did not cooperate, and now he's back on the baseball field, had two home runs the other day. Just what have been your impressions, the way Jose Reyes has handled this whole thing, and uh, what you've been able to see for him since uh, returning to the New York Mets and playing now third base? Well, I think he's handled it well. I mean, I'm happy for Jose. I love, love Jose, and, you know, He's sorry for what he, what happened, what he did. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into that. Obviously, that's a, that's a sore subject with a lot of people and myself included. And you know, I'm not I'm not gonna forgive you know guys that do that to women or whatever. But you know, you have to look past it at some point. And the way I look at it is, you know, he's back. He's part of the team. Uh, it is what it is. He's going to on the games. He's gonna he's gonna help the team. Obviously. He already has, and I think I think it'll be a good thing for him because he's he's coming back into a situation that is comfortable for him, it's familiar, and I think that he'll thrive in that. Howard, one final question before we let you run. I just want to get back to the All Star Game. Forgot to ask you this: yeah. um, when you take a look at the All Star Game, and they've been doing this ever since 2003, the winner gets home field advantage. That just drives me crazy. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I, I understand how, how that's gotten to be that because, you know, the games were getting to just take forever and it was just too much of a show. So I think it's kind of fun that for the fans to, to uh, you know, we, we need a player. I mean, at least, at least when I was there, we wanted to win. We, I remember, I forgot he was our league president back in 89, but I remember him coming in and saying, uh, hey, we want to win this game. We want to show the National League is better than the American League. So we're going to have fun. We're going to, everybody's going to get the opportunity that we want to win this game. And and the players that were the veteran guys that have been been through it before, you know, they all echoed the same thing. So, you know, it's it's fun that uh, maybe they put you know put something out there for the for the teams. You know, home field advantage. I like it, but uh, it's good for the fans. I think to give me something else to kind of watch for. Hojo, this is a whole lot of fun. Thanks so much. Let's do it again real soon. All right, Jack. Thanks.